Hi, I'll introduce myself while they're advancing my slides. I'm a private practice doctor in Sun City West. I'm a, a gatekeeper for a lot of the major um, medical plans. So patients come to me before they can see a specialist. One of the things we have to do is about 20 comprehensive exams on patients that are 70, 80, and 90 years old. We do them every 20 minutes and they're very thorough. The only way I can really do that and do a great job when patients have macular degeneration, they have glaucoma, they have diabetes, they have VMTs, they have sudden vision loss, is I implement scribes, I implement pretesting, but I also have wholeheartedly implemented technology. And I use an item image on every single patient that I see, over 100 images a, a week. So it really has changed the way I practice and essentially made me a more thorough and uh, better doctor. This is really what you guys are working with every day. We pull out our 90 Doppler lens. Patients' lids might have ptosis. They might have watery eyes. They may be leaning back from the slit lamp and you're encouraging them to lean forward. And you're getting views that are coming and going of their macula. And with the binocular indirect, if you're lucky, they'll move into the cardinal positions. It works, you get a lot of little slices, you try to put them together in your brain, and you try to figure out what's going on with this person's eyes. And you do that all day on difficult patients with cataracts. It's, it's a way to go about it, but with current technology, you can do better. I walk into the exam room, before I even pull out my lenses or do anything when the patient has been dilated and it's time to do the dilated part of the exam, and this is up on a monitor that's at least two feet, high resolution. Obviously, when you use a projection, it doesn't give you any feel for just how crisp these images are, although many of you have seen them on ODs on Facebook and on the web, and you can get a feel for how the vessels just almost pop out in 3D. But you have a lay of the land. You haven't even begun the exam, and you already know you've got a hemorrhage, you know where to look for it, and basically you're directed right to the pathology. If it's diabetic, you've already had a great idea of whether you have retinopathy or not. Do we really need this? I know a lot of doctors are pretty confident in their direct skills with 90 Doppler and 20 Doppler lenses. So what about the best glaucoma doctors in the world from Wills, UCLA, UCSF? They are glaucoma doctors. They look at optic nerves for a living. They could not find Drant's hemorrhages 84% of the time, only the photo center reading their photos after the fact picked up the Drance hemorrhages. So the best glaucoma specialist in the world doing a study, these people look at nerves for a living and they miss the Drance hemorrhages. But with imaging, a person who's not the best doctor in the world in a photo center picked them up. Um, another reason that we want to consider a wide field, high resolution imaging is the paper that you've all seen in the last couple of journals that showed peripheral diabetic pathology uh, is a very big predictor of who is going to progress to proliferative retinopathy. And so it was with high resolution, wide field imaging that you can pick these lesions up and they are important in that they are now 4.7 times increase of progressing to proliferative when you see these lesions. We see four or five diabetic patients every single day. Some of them do look like this. There's not a slide I'll put up today that we haven't collected in the last four months. These are just what I see every day. Obviously, this is a, a case that's complicated, but once again, I'm not sure I'd want to piece this puzzle together with my 90 diopter lens. Walking in the room with this to start with is a tremendous boost to my exam. This is what we deal with. We're looking through cataracts. We're looking through people that might have had a YAG laser, but their uh, lens capsule is fibrosed. And this is what you get with a standard camera. Taken on the same day, if you look at the vessel branching on the top, you'll see it's the same patient with the Aiden. It blows right through the cataract and basically can do what my human eye can't do, get a clear image of the retina, to allow me to see what's going on through a dense cataract. Even patients that are completely normal, the 17-year-old with their mother present, 
will do and aid an image because it's just enhances our practice profile. They know we have high technology, the machine moves around like a robot. They're confident that we're up to date as a practice. And we can also just give them a tour of their eye and they always say, wow. And there's been cases where I've had completely normal images and the next uh, visit they had a cotton wool spot and I said, wow, did I miss something like that last time? And you can go back and look at that normal image and realize the pathology that you're seeing this visit is indeed new. Because it's confocal, it takes focus layers through the different layers of the retina. It doesn't just average them together the way white light would. So you get a really good surface uh, in interlimiting membrane view. It's amazing how many patients have epiretinal membranes that are either much more subtle, obviously I'm gonna use a dramatic one in the picture than this, but it might explain why your refraction's only getting you 2025. You take the image, you see the small ERM, and you know why it is you just can't get them any further when everything else looks okay. It's just a particularly good thing this does is pick up these uh, small ERMs. Uh, the shadow next to the optic nerve is a floater. It also manages to pick those up pretty well too. In general, we use it on all our patients and we don't just walk into the room with it um, that size. The first thing I'll do is zoom it up and look at the vessels, especially in the diabetics. And it just helps me get a lay of the land and also lets me zoom in on the pathology and center it on the screen. And you just can't beat it for communication. You can talk about a mole in the eye, or that can be on a two-foot monitor in front of the patient. This is what happens when you zoom it up. You can really see the crossing changes. It just does not lose resolution. There's a macular hole. If you look at that nevus on, on the uh, left there, it's pretty subtle. But because it does an infrared view, which is just let a, another slice on the outer retinal layers, you can really define that nevus there and see its borders much more carefully. So in next year when I see that nevus, I'll be looking at that IR view to see if it's advanced. If the only thing I had was a lower resolution picture of that nevus, I don't even know if in every visit I'd catch it if I had the light too bright and didn't get it indirectly. So it's just an a cyber enhancement in a way to my own eyes. What's out there now? Of course, many of you have an Optos or have heard of an Optos. They have a wider field of view than the Aiden, but they sacrificed clarity, and I have to see five diabetic patients a day. I couldn't do much with the vessel image of an Optos. I got to look for microaneurysms, dot hemorrhages, and progression. Um, they just have given up resolution and true color imaging for about 20 more degrees out in the periphery. On the way I practice, it doesn't really matter because I'm still doing dilation and binocular indirect. So I'm getting that peripheral 20 degrees, and then the central 110 or 20, I'm getting in high resolution. That's a trade I'll take all day. If they had a high resolution aid in camera out there for 10 years, and everyone saw great detail, and then Optos came out with low resolution and not true color, but said we added 20 more degrees of the periphery, and we tripled the price, would they sell one unit? Probably not. It's not a trade I'd make. I'll take resolution and I'll get that last 20 myself. So why is it a game changer? True color, wide field imaging. Confocal scanning of the layers lets me look in in a way that white light doesn't because it averages out the image. High resolution, the whole point is to use this as a true clinical tool, not as a wow factor or even as a cash register, to use it to make you a better doctor. In that case, I need resolution. Images clearly through a dense cataract. Pathology is with seniors. Seniors have cataracts. A machine that can't image through a cataract is not very useful. Images through poorly dilated pupils or undilated pupils. Patients that come in with 2050, you can't dilate them because they didn't bring a driver. I can still get a central view. Automated, I don't have to teach anybody anything, as Dr. Gerson said. If you can push a button, you can take an image. There's no staff training. And then I do like that infrared, especially for uh, choroidal nevuses. Thank you very much.